Before I uh, talk about the role of the peer and advocate, I think it might be useful uh, to do an overview of the development of peer and advocacy in Victoria. We've only been going about three years, but during that time we've covered a lot of territory. If we go back to 82, um, we remember that the then Minister of Education, Mr Fordham, set up the committee to undertake the ministerial review of services for disabled, and I think you've got the message about that, that that's the Bible. In 84, the committee's recommendations were released in the report, which we constantly referred to, um, and integration became government policy. We've also gone over and over the five guiding principles, so I won't reiterate that. And Marge also made reference uh, to the study of the submissions and what they revealed. And to my way of thinking, it was very important because uh, the submissions received from parents revealed that parents of children with hearing impairments frequently felt quite overwhelmed by the number of experts that they encountered during the ascertainment process. Uh, and they indicated that they felt very aware of the imbalance in numbers of specialists present and the unequal relationship between the assessment panel and themselves. The conceptual framework of the review emphasised the need to equalise the relationship between the parents and the service providers, including professionals. The review also stated that the enrolment of children with impairments and disabilities in regular schools depends upon the balance of responsibilities and in the four stages of the collaborative process. That was shared information between all members of the integration support group, shared decision making, shared action and shared responsibility. And it also said that parents have the right to procedural safeguards and advocates of their choice. Finally, the review stated that empowering of parents in the decision-making process entails the provision of parent advocates at the school, regional and central level. Equalising the relationship and preserving the balance of persons in the decision-making group is very important to democratic decision-making processes. 